Hello everyone, it's Nina and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a, another reading vlog. I really had a fun time filming my 100 pages a day reading vlog, so I thought I would transition into another one. In this reading vlog, we're going to be reading from one of my tried and true favorite genres, which is Iliad retellings. The audiobook I ended up reading was A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, and I also started Wrath Goddess Sing by Maya Dean. A Thousand Ships is a sort of multiple point of view novel that focuses on all of the women from the original story and shows sort of a female perspective on the brutality of war. And in Wrath Goddess Sing, it's a retelling that takes a little bit more liberties with some of the original storyline. Some of the characters are switched around and the relationships are also different. For example, in this novel, Achilles is the child of Athena instead of of Thetis. And also one of the biggest changes in the novels, which was a, definitely a big draw for me, is that Achilles is reinterpreted as a trans woman. This was definitely one of my biggest, most anticipated releases for 2022. And yeah, I'm glad that I was able to read some of it for this reading vlog. The other genre that I'm going to be reading from for this reading vlog is quickly becoming one of my favorites, and that is Donmei novels. Donmei, for those uninitiated, is basically Chinese boys' love, and both of these novels fall under the subset of wuxia novels, which basically is this kind of vaguely, like, non-specific Chinese historical genre. The main characters are cultivators, which borrows from Taoist principles, but I think more so just becomes shorthand for magic. There's a lot of other fantasy elements with like demons and like other elemental spirits. The main characters like have magical abilities and have like magical swords that they're able to like fly on. At first I thought they might fly on sort of like a witch's broom, but I think it's literally like they're standing on their swords, skateboard style. The two novels I'm reading in this reading vlog are both written by Mo Xiang Tongxu or MXTX, who is probably one of the most popular um, writers in this genre, at least in the Western audience. The first one of that is The Scum Villain self saying System. This is the second volume. I talked about getting the first volume in a previous book haul, and as soon as I finished that, I had to go out and immediately get the second volume because I was really enamored with the story. The main plot is the main character's story um, ends up being reincarnated in the body of the main villain of a popular wuxia novel. And in the original novel, the main character Cheng Chiu ends up becoming the villain and dies at the hands of the main character Lu Ho Binghe. But now that he's gotten this second chance at life, he doesn't want to throw away and follow the original novel's plotline. And instead, he tries to do everything he can to get into Binghe's good graces. But because of that attempt, he ends up making Binghe fall in love with him. I really, really enjoyed the first um, volume of this story. The second one, a little bit less so. But at the same time, I'm still very excited to see where the story goes from here. Since this was my first wuxia and also danmei novel, there was a little bit of a learning curve for me. And I wouldn't say this necessarily was the best first option for me to get into the genre with because it is a little more tongue-in-cheek and it's poking fun at reoccurring tropes that are in this type of novel. But at the same time, I felt like I was able to pick up on a lot of the tropes pretty quickly and understand everything. The other novel that I ended up reading is The Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation or Mo Dao Zushi. This is an incredibly, incredibly popular Danmei novel. It has a live-action adaptation, an anime adaptation, and also a manga adaptation. The main plot follows the main character Wei Wuxian, who is a demonic cultivator. From what I understand, in regular cultivation, it's all about kind of like quelling negative spirits and making them be put to rest. But with demonic cultivation, it's more about bringing back those spirits' negative energy to have them fight on your behalf. So there's a lot more like necromancy involved, and it's very much looked down upon in the cultivator world. So basically, Wei Wuxian went against all like common doctrine and became a demonic cultivator. He ended up dying, and now 13 years later, he has been brought back in the body of a kind of like random guy. This guy sacrificed his life and soul and basically said that Wei Wuxian was allowed to live out the rest of his life in his body as long as he was able to get revenge for him and kill off the people that wronged him. And now that Wei Wuxian has this new body, he's planning to just like lay low and not go back to being this famous cultivator anymore. But he quickly runs into someone from his past who is Lan Wanji. And he is convinced that Wanji hates him. They had a kind of like tumultuous relationship when they were younger. But in reality, it seems that Wanji actually was madly like in love with Wu Xian and just like didn't know how to properly express his feelings. It feels very much like the trope of like a character bullying someone because they have a crush on them and they don't really know what to do with their feelings. And their dynamic is very interesting and I'm very excited to see how the story progresses. So these are the books we're going to be talking about for the rest of the reading vlog. 
I think the first clips you're going to see is that I ended up also deep cleaning a section of my bedroom. It had been a while since I'd like taken everything out of my clothing rack area and I just wanted to do a deep clean and kind of like remove all of my residual winter items which for some reason were still sitting in my closet despite the fact that it's been like 90 degrees for the last like three weeks. So yeah we're just gonna be doing some deep cleaning and reading some books. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and let's get right on into it. Odysseus, I now know you are in the land of the dead. When the bard first sang of your voyage to the underworld, I confess I wept. After so many years, I believed I had no more tears left to shed. But... So on Friday night, I finally finished the second volume of the Scum Villain Self-Saving System, and I'm really, really enjoying the story so far. I am like really clamoring to read the third volume, which came out yesterday. And I'm definitely going to order it in my next Write Stuff haul. But I decided to wait because I wanted to check out how much I enjoyed the Grandmaster of Dominant Cultivation. Yesterday morning on Saturday, I read the first two chapters, which puts me at um, page 58. And then this morning, I read the third chapter, which goes up until page 118. And I'm really, really loving it. So I'm definitely going to order the second and the third volume of this in my Write Stuff haul. The third volume I think comes out in the middle of August, which is probably after the fact that you're seeing this video because I usually film a couple weeks in advance. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to put all of my Donmai volumes into the same order and then just wait until the last one comes out and then they have it shipped at that point. Except I'm actually going to do a second Donmai order for the fourth volume of the Scumville and Self-Saving System, and also for the first volume of, I think it's called Husky and Black Cat Shizun. It's something like that. I'll put like a photo of what the cover looks like on the screen here. The fourth volume of Scumville and Self-Saving System comes out on my birthday, which is great. And the other one I just talked about comes out like the end of October. So I'm gonna do like a separate order for those two, especially right now because like everything is like extra on sale because of the Right Stuff sale. Anyway, I figured I'd give you a reading update for um, the Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. So far, I'm really, really loving it. I love Wei Wuxian as a main character. I just love his personality and how, like, 
like straightforward and funny he is. I feel like I like him even more than Chincho in Scumville and Self-Saving System because Chincho also has kind of like a lot of crazy absurdist funny things in his head but he doesn't really like project them outwards. He kind of always has like a really cool and calm and collected personality but I think Wuxian is a little bit more like bombastic and flamboyant in his presentation. At the point I'm at right now we are finally like getting a little bit more of the relationship with him and Wangji, who is I'm assuming going to be the love interest. Because I don't really know anything about this series, um, I, it took me a little while to figure out which of the other main characters we were introduced to who was going to be the love interest for Wuxian. But yeah, we've only like just really met Wangji and I'm assuming from this the relationship will develop. I will say going back to Scumville and self saving System, I absolutely love Bingha. I just love his like almost like yandere side in his like devotion for Chincho. And I'm really interested in seeing like how their relationship is going to progress because right now they kind of are on very like negative terms. And I'm pretty sure the next volume is the end. So I'm like, how in the course of one volume are they going to like wrap everything up? I did mention there's a fourth volume, but I'm pretty sure that's just all of like the extra side stories that were written after it. So yeah, we have one more volume of this, of like the main story. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see what the character relationships go through. I will also update you on the audiobook that I've been listening to. So I'm listening to uh, A Thousand Shifts by Natalie Haynes. I've been reading this book really quickly, which is really surprising for me. I usually take a while to read my audiobooks, but I've just been really, really enjoying it. And I think the fact that it's only nine hours is also aiding to me being able to get through it really quickly. So yesterday was Saturday, but I did end up working catering. Um, so I had time to listen to it on my commute. I ended up listening to, I think like 11%. I was at 65 when I started and I'm currently at 76%. And yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I definitely think I enjoy this less than Silence of the Girls, which is probably the most comparable of the other Iliad retellings that I've seen to this one, just because they both focus on like a strictly female perspective of the events of the Trojan War. I think the thing that is both kind of like a double-edged sword for A Thousand Ships is that there's so many different perspectives that we're getting that at the same time it's always like something new and fresh to like experience and learn about. But at the same time it's hard to have like a cohesive narrative going through because we're jumping so drastically between all of the different characters. I will say of the characters that I've met through this book, the POV that I was really interested in was with Penthesilea, who is the Amazon warrior who fights Achilles and ends up getting killed by him. But I really liked how it was framed in this book that she was really like his equal in like all aspects, both like physically and emotionally, because she was also someone who had lost like the most important person in her life and was only battling for the sake of finding someone that would be able to kill her. And then when Achilles does kill her and she like thanks him for her death, it's like he's realizing that she has the same grief inside of her and understanding that like he has. And I thought that was like really, really beautiful and really interesting. And it also makes me interested to see if there's more like historical retellings that focus on the Amazons. So I definitely will be checking that out in the future. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to read any more of my audiobook today just because it's the weekend and I only usually listen to my audiobook on weekdays. But I definitely think at the pace I'm going through, I can finish this on Monday. If not then, then on Tuesday. Because again, I only have a quarter of it left and I've been reading about like 20% a day, even more than that on some days. And just at the level I'm enjoying the Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation, I'll probably read more of this at bedtime tonight. And I guess bouncing between my two moods of being interested in my Don My series and my Iliad retellings, I either want to watch Troy or maybe start The Untamed tonight. I think either of those I can convince my fiance to watch with me. So I'll definitely update you on my thoughts on either of those series. But yeah, that's the update for today. Hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you in the next one. Here's today's fit. My top is from Lucy and Yak. Jeans are from Old Navy. I got new Converse that are this low top, light blue color. And now let's go to Target. I see your choice. The vlog, lovely. I really like the
So I'm popping in on Tuesday to give you an update of everything that happened from Sunday night until now. So on Sunday night, we did end up watching the first two episodes of The Untamed on Netflix. And I did not realize that that series is 50 episodes long. And I'm like doing the math because Model Sushi's is five volumes long and each chapter is about like an episode length, at least from how it's going so far. So if there's seven chapters in a book, seven times five would end up being 35 episodes. So I'm like, what is the rest of the series that leads it to be 50 episodes long? I've been reading a lot more of Model Sushi. I currently am on page 238. And I've been really excited to pick this up and read as much as possible so that we can watch further along in the live action series. But it's really fun. I liked all of the backstory that we've gotten so far with Wuxian and Wanji when Wuxian was studying at the Land Clan's like headquarters. They have a really good dynamic so far. I think that there's a lot of signs that are pointing to how Wangji kind of has like a crush on Wuxian, which is really cute, even though outwardly he's projecting like a very stoic almost like kind of like Sundere energy towards Wuxian. I feel like the majority of the last chapter was just backstory, sort of like learning about the two together. And now we're getting into more of like the general plot. That's what I've been reading physically so far. And on Monday, I did end up finishing my audiobook, which was A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. I think I'm going to end up giving this four stars. I liked it a little bit less than Silence the Girls and obviously a lot less than Song of Achilles. The ending was more of the same that I talked about in my previous update of there being just like such a wide breadth of different perspectives that we're following. But even with all of those different perspectives, I feel like by the end it did come together to be a really cohesive narrative. This is not like a negative or a positive, just something I noticed compared to Silence of the Girls, which I think has a very similar like structure and narrative to this um, in that I found that this one focused a lot less on sexual violence, which I think, especially in stories of antiquity and war, it tends to be like the main like negative aspect that comes upon the female characters in the story. This, th while this one did have a little bit of that in it, I felt like the main like emotional beats were focused more around loss, particularly with loss of like male children and husbands. And yeah, I just thought it was interesting they included a lot of this familial loss in addition to the sexual violence as like another injustice that is like forced upon women in wartime. I think overall the reason I like Silence of the Girls a little bit more is because of the cohesive narrative that we have in that one and just being able to follow Brisee's throughout the entirety of the story. Whereas with this one, even if you connected to a character, they weren't guaranteed that they were going to stay around in the plot for more than one or two chapters before you would jump back to a different point of view character. And just because of that, you can't connect with them as deeply as you do with Brisee's in Silence of the Girls. This book does have a similar feeling that I have with Silence of the Girls in that I'm very glad I read it. I think it's a really good book and definitely one that I would recommend. But at the same time, I'm glad I just read it through the library because I don't think it's a book I will ever read again mostly because it's kind of like a pretty heavy emotional story and it's not something I really want to put myself through more than once. Another highlight of this book in talking about the wide breadth of perspectives is that since we learn about so many different characters, they kind of all have like kind of like ancillary stories to the main Iliad storyline. Um, it gives me like a lot of like jumping off points for other characters to look to see like the origins of their myths or to see if other retellings have been done about them. I do think this book hinges on you having read some of the Iliad or know like its basic structure before going into it because you will be confused at some points without it. But at the same time, I think it also does a good job of allowing you to learn about the characters within the context of the story and gives enough like framework for you to know what's going on without knowing all of the details of their original myths. So finishing that book, I decided to move on to a different Iliad retelling. And that one is Wrath Gotta Sing by Maya Dean. This is a Iliad retelling that focuses on Achilles being a trans woman and kind of like going through her storyline with a couple minor changes, at least so far from what I've read. So far I've read the first two chapters, which I think was the first like 25 pages-ish. And I'm liking it so far. I really like the writing style. I think it's really beautiful, not super like lyrical, but it has enough like detail and like really like heartfelt energy behind it, if that makes any sense. One thing that is interesting is this story is using the, I guess like more like historically accurate name for the Trojans because people aren't 100% sure where Troy is supposed to be. They think it's supposed to be somewhere in like what is now modern Turkey in Asia Minor. So they're calling the Trojans in the stories the Hittites. I'm hoping I'm saying that right, but it was a little bit confusing because I was looking at the map in the beginning of like trying to figure out where Troy is supposed to be. And obviously it's not labeled as such in this story. 
I'm interested in seeing where the story goes. It's actually a lot longer than I initially thought it was going to be, so I don't know if I'll be able to finish it by the end of this vlog. But yeah, I'm happy to pick this up and I'll probably read more of this and more of Modazushi later today. So I wanted to show you a package that came in. Um, I ordered two earrings as a birthday gift for my friend Elaine, which it will be long past her birthday when this video gets posted. I'm actually going to give these to her on Saturday, but I wanted to show you them because they were wrapped up really well and the shop is really, really cute. Like a really nice, like independent artist, small business. So I'll definitely link them down below. The first pair of earrings are these really cute, like long chain ones with a little bee charm at the bottom. And the second one is this stack of little frog faces that are in the colors of the bi flag. I thought these were just so adorable. And our friend Elaine really likes like kind of like kitschy weird earrings. So I felt like these were both very much on brand. So it's been a couple days now and I wanted to give you an update of everything else that I ended up reading before the end of the week. By the time the vlog had started, I had already finished the second volume of Scumville and Self Saving System. I'm going to give this one a four stars. I did like it a little bit less than the first volume in the series, but I think that overall it's still around the same ranking. As you saw with the vlog, I both started and finished the entirety of the first volume of the Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. And I think I'm going to give this a 4.5 stars. Since this is the second series that was published after Scumville and Self Saving System, I can see where MXTX kind of like grew in her storytelling ability. A lot of these side characters are a lot more fleshed out and I feel like overall the story has just like a much larger grand scale to it and I'm very excited to see where the story progresses from now on. Because I was so enamored with this series as well, I ended up starting to watch the TV show The Untamed. I think at the point I was at in the vlog, I only watched the first three-ish episodes of it and I've realized that the TV show is taking a very different narrative structure compared to the book. Instead of kind of jumping back and forth between the present and past timelines, the TV show was just going straight through the entirety of the past timeline, which I think is a little bit odd because it seems like, at least with the book, it's kind of trying to have more of a mystery element to it in terms of who the villains are going to be, but the TV show seems like it's laying it out pretty straightforwardly. So as I read more volumes of this, I'll be interested in kind of like comparing and contrasting the different story elements between the two adaptations. I also ended up finishing A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. I'm going to give this a four stars. I did really enjoy it and I thought the writing style was quite nice, but at the same time, I did not like it as much as I have other Iliad retellings. I also don't remember what page I was on in Wrath Goddess Sing when I last updated you with it, but now it's been a couple days later and I have ended up finishing the book. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in depth in a future reading wrap up. But at the point I was at, I was intrigued in a lot of elements that have been changed. But I feel like at the point I am now, I'm not 100% sold in all of the changes that were made with the characters. I loved all of the trans rep aspects of the storyline, especially like what they did with Perseus. But, the, but there were other things about this that I think both like within the storyline didn't necessarily work, but also like with my personal taste didn't really work. So yeah, this one just was a little bit of a miss for me. But overall, those are the books that I ended up reading in this last reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know down below if you like these longer vlog style videos. They're definitely a lot more work for me to film and edit, but at the same time, I find it really rewarding and I really like watching reading vlogs, so I'm happy to continue making them in the future. But anyway, that is it from me today. Please consider liking this video and subscribing if you aren't already. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!